All right, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be playing Metal Fatigue. This is going to be a video on missions one through three of the Diego campaign, which is the uh, first of three campaigns and supposedly the easiest. I've got it on the hardest difficulty, but this is supposedly the easiest campaign. We'll see how that goes. And this one we're just kind of establishing how to play. There's not a whole lot of anything going on in this first mission. We just have to uh, make two combots, which are the giant uh, mechs that you use to wage the majority of your wars, of these intergalactic wars over alien technology. And you have to build the individual parts for your combat, including uh, training crews or recruiting crews to 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 man them. Uh, one of the essential resources in this is manpower, which you get through uh, cryo farms. The more cryo farms you have, the better everything runs. And once you exhaust your manpower, you can't build any more uh, vehicles and all that stuff, and most everything that you have will run much slower. Uh, your units will still move around at the normal speed, but your research won't get done as fast, your things won't be built as fast, your vehicles won't come out as fast, or won't be, uh, won't be built as fast. So manpower is probably just as important as your resources. You can get your what they call metajoules, which is your primary resource, from uh, sending these little hovering tanks to uh, mine uh, the energy out of the lava pits like you see there and also uh, in later missions you'll have access to the skies and to solar panels and uh, you can put solar panels on the ground too but they're better placed in the uh, in the sky closer to the sun even though it wouldn't seem like much of a change but these meteors are outside of the atmosphere or whatever, so they're the ideal place for solar panels. And once you have control of the sky, you have as many resources as you need. You will not run out. At least it's very unlikely you're going to be using enough resources to run out when you have uh, solar panels everywhere. But we'll get to that later. Right now I'm just overdoing the requirements for this mission. All I have to do is make a second combat, but I decided to take down the majority of the enemy force before I did that. You can see on the combat there's, uh, he has like big shoulders with the, uh, yellow lining on them and that means he's one of the essential crew members so he's he's Diego he's the main guy for this campaign and so his crew mustn't die so if you lose the combat and your crew survives tell your crew to leave because otherwise things will go very badly for them and you'll just fail the mission because your main character died basically Here we're just cleaning up most of the enemy's base. 
they really don't have a chance. The little orders menu on the right there shows you like a lot of the different commands you can use. One of the best ones is for the uh, little hover trucks. You can have them set to repair one specific thing, so they'll just follow it around and continue repairing it. And so you can make like a whole train of them repairing each other. And that's always fun to do. Although the enemy, uh, the CPU, is smart enough to go after those hover vehicles rather than just attacking whatever's in front. But they'll have to get around it to attack them. So play your cards right and you will build an invincible army being constantly repaired. A lot of these others are pretty standard units. Those little missile trucks can shoot into the air or on land. They, they can shoot at anything on land or in the air. Uh, the tanks, I don't think they can actually attack anything in the air. They're not fast enough to aim at stuff like that. There's some uh, artillery units that you'll see later on that look pretty similar to those tanks, but they obviously shoot significantly farther. You can see the lava resource is getting really dark because it's losing all its energy. It'll slowly replenish, but it's not really worth coming back to the same pool. Chances are you're going to find resources elsewhere. You don't need to keep using the same one. And there, I just built the other combat. So the mission is complete. On to mission two. This is a little pre-build sequence where you... Uh, you have like a limited number of resources, but you can build things uh, pretty much instantly to kind of prepare for the beginning of the mission. And so I made sure to build cryo farms and a uh, vehicle bay so I can start stocking up on the necessary units. And over the top right there, there is a an elevator that you can't see right now that will go down into the earth. And that little drill unit is useful for, you guessed it, drilling. So you can uh, go down there and then there will be some areas that you can't get to unless you use one of those drill trucks. Oh yeah. That's one of my favorite uh, features is patrol. Anything you put on patrol will act a lot smarter than your normal units. Because uh, like that hover truck is going to patrol, so anytime one of the other units gets damaged, it'll go over and start repairing it automatically. Whatever's closest. So if there's something you find really important getting damaged and it's farther away, it's going to get the last, it's going to be last in line to get repaired unless you assign something specifically to that unit. Uh, the big dome in the center on the top is a uh, the matter energy converter. And what that amounts to is basically your base's force field which can be extended in different directions, and that's actually the purpose of this mission, is to teach you about the defense relays, which are these little uh, spinning radar dish towers that extend the range of that matter converter. And so if I click on it or click on one of the defense relays, you'll see this like uh, green aura around the area and it'll kind of tell you what's getting better defense because anything inside of that range is more well defended than anything outside of it. I don't think I showed that part earlier but there was a uh, another an enemy combat that showed up 
and I was able to destroy it, and its uh, torso didn't get destroyed. So you can, uh, when a piece of the com an enemy combat, well, when a piece of any combat isn't destroyed, you can pick it up uh, either by dropping whatever arm it is off of your combat and then picking it up, or you can use your hover trucks to to do the same thing. They can they can pick it up and then you can return it to the uh, the combat, uh, we'll call it the combat 3D printer there, the little pad with the floating arms, with the spinning arms around it. And then you can, uh, there's a research station you can get later on that will let you actually research those parts so you can make them instead of just having to acquire them from the enemy. But I think that's only mission to mission. So you won't keep that research even if you have like all of the enemy's technology. It'd be nice, but I think that's that'd be taken a little too far. Giving you a little too many advantages. Think of it like if you've ever played the original StarCraft, it's a lot like the mechanics the uh, Protoss have. I don't know if they had that in the original game, but when the Brood Wars came out, there was a unit that let them take control of pretty much any other unit. Like, they could psychically take control of it. And so they'd, you could end up having an army of Protoss, Zerg, and Terran all on the same side. But it works a lot like that in this game. It's just just with combat parts. Here I am building up the defense relay. You can see that green line around everything. That's all the area where I would have a lot better defense. And that's mission complete because there's a little building up there that I was supposed to get inside the defense relay. Okay, in mission three here, this is the uh, orbital... Uh, meteorites that I was talking about. So I'm building up some uh, defenses on them because the enemy will also use this area. But if I have turrets set up here, they're not they're not going anywhere. And then I can start putting down uh, solar panels all over the place, which is as close to an infinite resource as you could possibly imagine. Um, once you have enough of them, like I said, you will not run out of resources. In fact, you're going to max your resources pretty quickly if you have enough solar panels. And they run most efficiently up here. You can put them on the ground, but you might as well use that space for solar panels until you get to the next stage when you'll need uh, more than just uh, ground-based turrets. There will be some air enemies. Oh, and these mobile walls are really nice. They, uh, as you can see, they they move. They can't attack while they're moving, but they are uh, quite useful because you can put a wall anywhere, basically. And if you have a unit standing in the middle between two walls when they form, they will actually destroy that unit. So, got to be careful about uh, watching out for your your own units dumbly standing around in the middle. Because it will happen. It's not the best, the AI in, the, in this game does not have the best pathfinding, so you're going to see stuff get stuck a lot of the time. And if you're curious about this game, it's on Steam, I think. At least it was on Steam. It's still, it must still be because I'm still able to play it. I think if they took it off, I wouldn't be able to play it anymore. Which is the unfortunate part about online only, or not online only, but uh, you know, for service games, whatever it's called. I'm just destroying this elevator so the enemy units can't come out of there and bother me. It's not really that essential that I do that, I just didn't feel like having that elevator right there. Plus it'll block anything that's trying to shoot through it. The terrain actually does affect the uh, angle of 
your shots and stuff so those turrets that are higher up on the hill are getting a better angle for shooting at stuff than this than the turrets that are lower which is why i have the lasers in front the cannons can kind of arch over stuff but the lasers shoot in a straight line and will just shoot the back of whatever is in front of them the enemy uh Hover trucks keep trying to come into my base and use my uh, lava because I've blocked off all the uh, resources upstairs. So they're like desperate for lava. Oh, and that's another thing about the lava is the is uh, underground. The lava is uh, richer. So if you go underground, you'll get more energy from lava. If you go up above, you'll get more energy from sun. And on the the normal plane, it's everything kind of average. Uh, that mech made made the made an attempt there. Didn't get to us. I'm gonna switch back and forth between saying combat and mech because combat's a bit a bit much to say, and mech is kind of the standardized term for giant robots with people inside. Yeah, he probably shouldn't have tried to get close to us by himself. Yeah, I was going to start trying to build energy banks up there on that big gray square, but I got kind of distracted by all the stuff that was going on down here. Not really essential that I have a lot of a larger pool of resources when I've got a constant flow of sun, uh, solar energy coming in. So you can see one of those combats has a uh, very solid looking shield and the other one has like that shiny shield and that that's a, a physical shield and the other one's an energy shield. So there's different types of damage. There's energy damage and there's uh, kinetic damage. So you kind of have to build for what you think you're going to have to deal with, or just build a lot of varied units. So there's never one thing that all your units are totally weak to, or at least keep them all inside the uh, defense relay like that. Because they, you can see they're like dying a lot slower than they would if if they stepped outside of that. Well, you can't see that, but <laughs> they would die a lot faster if they weren't inside the the field right now. Especially against a combat. That combat should be destroying those tanks like nothing. So when you're attacking an enemy base, one of the first things you want to aim for is their cryo farms, because if they don't have cryo farms, they can't do anything. Everything they do is going to be really slow. So you take those out, you take out that matter, gen that matter energy converter, the big spinny thing, and they're pretty much screwed. I think once you take down the matter gen energy converter, they will give up in most circumstances, unless they've built another one, which I think they can do. I know they're capable of it, I just don't know if the computer will actually choose to do that. And so the, the uh, enemy that I'm attacking now is from Europa, which is one of the other uh, companies. There's like three giant mega corporations that are like controlling different uh, parts of this uh, galaxy and uh, Rimtech is the blue guys Europa Neuropa something like that is the uh, the guys I'm fighting right now and then there's Milagro I think which is the other uh, I might be wrong about that but there's the red guys from the first mission are 
one of the other teams or the other, one of the other corporations. A lot of this stuff is based off uh, an alien technology that they found in this other solar system. And this, I think, all of this stuff is taking place on a different planet, or on different, multiple different planets, where this alien technology is like being scavenged and used. But yeah, that was metal fatigue. You guys have a good day. Bye bye.